Alrighty guys, welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be doing a trade recap for Wednesday, November 8th. Today we absolutely fucking killed it. We took four trades. I'm four for four on the day, so we're going to go over my bias throughout the day, going into the day, what was I looking for, and uh, sort of just go through everything and, and talk about kind of our plan and, and, my, and my kind of thought process throughout the day. So going into the morning here on NQ, the biggest thing I was looking for was to understand, again, where, where market wants to go. The always first thing I'm going to look at going into the morning is understand what the draw on liquidity is. So going into the morning, looking at the five minute, I noticed the structure formed in the overnight session. We're starting to form that buy side of the curve. We came down. We noticed we failed to go lower. We get displacement back up and start to form this trend up. So I was expecting what we saw on Monday, which was pretty much right at the open to get a push to this high. So to the team in the morning, I was basically saying, guys, I'm expecting to see a push in the morning. I don't know if we'll get an entry model, but I will be looking to see if I do get an entry model to target this high, because most of the time when we do get action like this, which is starting to work our way up, work our way up. And then before market open, we get a move like this, again, creating an imbalance. This gives me confidence that this is now becoming really biased out of the curve. And I'm expecting when market opens, the influx of volume will most likely push us to that draw liquidity, which is that buy side level. So going into the open, I notice we have this 15 minute fair value gap, and I'm looking to see us come down and respect this area. Now, I actually entered right when we tapped into this because I was pretty confident that this was most likely going to hold again. Notice this is the only imbalance that we've created besides the previous one here, which was the first one that got respected. So this for me is the second entry, which is what I look for. And there's actually a small one right here that got respected too. But once we got these kind of a three candle structure, which was really clean, I knew that once we tap this, we're probably, again, Monday or not Monday, sorry, morning action, we're going to most likely get bought up and go straight to that high. So we came back one minute fair value gap came down, ended up sweeping whatever that original low was, held this, and then we got pretty much a straight up move to that high. So that was really the first trade that I took in the morning. Again, I wouldn't really say that this would be a... If I had to rate this setup, I would give it probably more of a, a B plus to an A minus than it would be an A plus setup. And the only reason I say that is because I would, I would have really liked to see this low get taken. Now, what, what made this like, I'm not, I'm not mad about it or what I'm not upset about is because we already bounced off of the four hour. Like we were in, we were in this massive imbalance. So we didn't really need to come down to take that low. Cause we were already in this big imbalance and we already had displacement out of this imbalance. And that's, that's what kind of gave me the conviction for it, but it would have gave me even more conviction for longs. If we came down took this low, then had this move. And then, and then we had, you know, a setup towards buy side, but that was pretty much the first trade that I took going into the morning, which was actually right at open. Normally I don't, I don't, trade at open. A lot of the times I'll at least wait 15, 20 minutes um, before taking some sort of trade. But today, again, you never know where you're up, what kind of opportunity you're going to get. And that's uh, what we got there. So first trade there took in the morning. And then right after, a little bit right after I took another long, which was an internal model, which is actually pretty much the exact same model as it would be this this trade right here, but on a, on a, on a slow on a smaller time frame. So zooming in again, once buy side is swept here, I'm bearish, right? I'm bearish once this high is swept. And you're like, oh my God, Justin, why would you take a long then? Because what has to happen for me to get validation that the draw on liquidity is lower and I need to take shorts? I need to get displacement. Notice we get no displacement. This low right here is what is the deciding factor. And I'm going to let me take this previous trade off so we can see better. This is the deciding factor. When we come down and we take buy side and we then have a swing low that we're putting in, if I'm short biased, I need to see this get ran through and I need to see displacement to the downside. We come down, sweep the internal low and immediately bounce up. When I zoom into a smaller time frame as well, you'll notice the imbalance gets ran through to the upside. We have a 15 second imbalance. We come down, we sweep these equal lows, we get displacement and we run this imbalance. So this to me, again, is a clear internal sell side of the curve, buy side of the curve model. You have the internal equal low swept. You get the imbalance fully ran through. This to me looks like we're starting to build low resistance liquidity run. All of these highs starting to stack up. I'm expecting this to get bought up. So when we come back up and we run this imbalance, I take this as an inverse, again, expecting this to be just a run to this high. Again, notice I'm not looking to 
to, to catch this move. I'm not looking to catch anything other than just this internal model because this is what I'm confident in. Now, you can you can leave a runner if you want to. That's fine. But with a trade like this, again, I, I could tell you this is a five-minute time frame. I could tell you this is a 15-minute, and, and you wouldn't know the difference because this is the same model that we trade day in and day out. We know what we are looking for, and that's one of the most important things in trading is you have to know what your setup is. You have to know what you're looking for. So we came down, swept this low. Right when this imbalance got ran through, again, recognizing the model, and then I used this as an inverse as well as entering into this imbalance that we pulled back in as well which we came back, held beautifully, and then ended up getting bought up to that buy side level. So that was the second trade we ended up taking. And at this point in time, I, I kind of plan to be, I kind of plan to be done. Again, I, I don't know what kind of opportunity I'm going to get later in the day. But at this point in time, I was like, all right, I'm pretty much done. I don't really need to like, you know, really trade anything. So at this point in time, I was kind of just watching. I was on live with DJ. Um, and so at this point, I was like, all right, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I, I, I kind of thought that we were going to maybe see higher. So after this trade, I'm just simply watching price action. Now, what happens afterward is we get the displacement move that I was originally looking for right here, right? Notice we come up, we sweep the internal high, right? Again, exactly the buy model that we would be, which we, we end up taking right there, but reversed. We come up, sweep internal, displace. Notice the displacement. When I say I want to see displacement, this is what I mean. It you can you don't second guess this when you see it, right? When you're up here and you're like, oh my god, should I take shorts? Guess what? You probably shouldn't because it's not clear to you. The market should be so clear where you don't hesitate, right? There's no reason for me to take shorts up here. This is the original consolidation to start sell side of the curve, right? This now becomes original consolidation. This now becomes sell side of the curve to then guess what? buy side of the curve later on in the day. But you have to understand what model we're in based off of what structure you're getting. So shorts, in my opinion, you shouldn't be touching until we get this move to the downside. Once we get this move, what do I think is going to happen? Where do you think the next strong liquidity goes? Whatever the recent swing low is most of the time, which is right here, which is London low. So we end up getting this displacement. Again, what am I looking for to enter into a trade now? I'm looking for a pullback to some sort of imbalance. And since we've had this, this move, which is like a straight down move, I want to see us go to equilibrium. Now, right when we were down here, the people who were in live, you saw me mark out this imbalance. And, and I got a lot of questions, which was, Justin, why did you mark this imbalance and not any other imbalance? And I'll tell you why. The more that you trade ICT concepts, the more that you'll know which imbalances to, to trade, which ones not to trade, but there's multiple reasons. Number one, this one is in, in discount. So again, if I'm ripping out a fib here, you can see we came back, tap discount. Number two, we also have a breaker. Number three, there's also a one minute order block here. It's the most confluence in any entry point in this area, right? The most confluence of what I would want to see. So number one, the first thing is, once we get to equilibrium and then I get displacement, I'm looking to add my full position. So the play that I did on this trade is I don't know if we're going to go back up here. I don't know if we're going to go up here and reject. So what I am going to do is I'm going to pick the most highly convicted area that I think we're going to reject, and I'm going to enter in my size, half size. And then once I get the rejection, I'm going to enter full size again, like we talked about the previous night about scaling in into a position and pyramiding. Once we come back up here, I enter in half my position size and I zoom into a 15 second. So I enter half my position up here, and you'll see I have three trades marked out here because this, this is all one trade, but I entered three different times. And this is what we talk about pyramiding, and we'll go over each entry. So the first entry was right here, in consequent encroachment of the one-minute fair value gap, which is the exact midpoint. And my original stop was somewhere, I think it was this high right here. So I was in Two or three contracts at the three, two or three contracts here. And I think I'm risking, what was I risking here? I think I was like three contracts, two contracts, somewhere around there, 680 to 1,000, somewhere around there. And that's in half position size, but I want to give more room. So if we do end up selling, I can then move my stop later on. So my original risk is $1,000 on three contracts, right? But what I'm looking to do is once I get the displacement out of this range, I'm looking to then add to this position and move my stop to whatever the swing high is or whatever the most recent high is. So I enter in my, my half position size. Once we get this move to the downside, what am I waiting for? Pull back to the imbalance. We have an imbalance right here. And I enter back in, not back in, sorry. I add to my position another two contracts. 
and I then move my stop loss to this high. So guess what? The original risk being $1,000, my risk becomes here. Again, I add another half my position, so full position. So this gets split in half. So my risk is now, again, my entry is now half of this, but guess what? My risk is now this high. So what do you think I'm risking here? With another, again, so I was in three contracts, now six contracts. I'm risking the exact same amount as I would be if I entered half my position size here and I left my stop here. But since I'm scaling into this position, since I'm pyramiding here, I then wait for the rejection, add to this position, move my stop to whatever the swing high is. And guess what? My original winning here is, if I'm in three contracts, how much am I winning on this trade? 1,800. If I scale into this position, how much am I winning on this trade versus how much am I losing? I'm making 3,400 with the exact same risk as I would be on the entry, right? This is how I have such big winners and such small losers, is I am constantly scaling into my winners and constantly cutting my losers early, right? And I only do this when I have conviction with the setup, right? That's why I'm always waiting for rejections, waiting for confirmation, because the more added conviction, the more I feel comfortable with adding to a position. So again, we've talked about this before, about the pyramiding and how you can be able to, to skew your risk and start to, you know, really you know, tweak the levels of how much you're risking versus how much you're rewarding. And this is how you get to, you know, come out of the day with such big losers and such small winners, right? Even if you, even if there's times where you're losing two trades, three trades, all you need is one winning trade if you can manage it correctly to bring you back, right? That's what good risk management is. That's what good risk to reward is. And that's, that's what good, you know, being able to just manage a position is. So not only I have another scaling. So I'm in six contracts at this point, or I think I was five maybe, because I, I, I still added more. So I, I don't think I went over my, my limit. Um, but again, we get this move. So again, my stop is now moved to this high. This is my stop loss at this point in time, right? And my fill is right here. So we get even more move to the downside. Again, if I am looking to add to a position, I need to see either some sort of internal model rejection. I need to see the timing of what I need to see happen because... The problem with pyramiding is if you don't know and have experience of when to enter, when to add to a position, and then you move your stop loss, you will get stop hunted and then it'll go right back in your favor and you'll end up getting stopped and then you'll miss out on the move because you don't know when to enter, right? Because there's times where people will come, come up here, be like, oh my God, let me enter short here and then move their stop way too tight, like to this high or something, and then get stopped out here just to then move lower, right? You have to be able to know what is reasonable risk? Where should I move my stop based off of structure, right? So for example, what do you think is more likely here? If looking at this move right here, why do you guys think that I, I didn't add here? Why do you guys think that I didn't add here? We came up, rejected, you know, the little, we had a little bit of a, like a breaker here or whatever. And then we got, you know, this move down here. Why, why did I not add here? Why did I wait? Number one, too small of imbalance. Number two, there's not displacement. And number two, there's not an internal stop rate. We end up coming up, taking this high. And then again, what am I looking for? Right when I see displacement of the downside after the stop rate, I know that it is 90% or like 90, whatever the fucking statistic is, it is way, 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 way less likely for us to come back up to this high now, now that this structure has been formed, right? If we're here, we could fucking come up here to the take this high. Absolutely. Because guess what? All the traders that are trailing their stop loss along the way and all swing highs, market's going to go back, gather liquidity, push. Market's going to go back, gather liquidity, push, right? So I'm waiting for the market to gather liquidity and then entering into my position to catch the expansion move. Again, what do you think this is as well? Oh my God, internal power of three. Oh my God, I would have never fucking guessed it because this is exactly how the market moves. You're going to see this every single where you look. So we come up, stop rate this high. And I enter even more contracts. I enter, I think I didn't, I think I only added like one more contract here though. But again, I'm, I'm adding, I'm adding when I know it's right. So I add even another contract. So I'm only adding one. So I'm, I'm going to say my entry model probably scales down not too much, probably maybe to here. And my stop now goes to break even because now that where we are right here, there's no way that we should be coming back up to here in my opinion. So now my original risk, I'm in seven contracts now instead of six. And guess what? I'm now risking literally nothing. I'm now risking literally nothing. Wait, why can't I? 
Why can't I do create trade? Oh, I think I'm gonna run. That's why I'm gonna replay. So let's talk about this. All right, first trade, three contracts. What's my risk? Stop loss up here. Boom. I'm risking a thousand. Wins eighteen hundred. Eh, that's not even that's not even a one to two. It's not even a one to two, right? Eh, it's it's okay, right? It's a good entry model. It's a good entry to scale into a position, right? Second trade. We get displacement of the downside in a pullback to an imbalance. I enter in, double my size, and I move my stop to this high. So now, again, original risk being $1,000, I'm now in six contracts, and my stop loss is $1,000. But instead of 800 or 1800 as my win, it's now 3400 Same Same risk. Get even a bigger move down, come back up, Enter in one more contract. Again, my, my fill gets lowered. I'm now in seven contracts with $100 risk and $3,700 profit. So it, it all really just depends. It's all about, it, this takes time. I wouldn't, I wouldn't stress much about this concept. The more that you have experience with this, the more that you're going to really start to understand it. But scaling into a position, in my opinion, is how you will. I, I think... People always say, uh, it doesn't hurt to take profits early. That is the most bullshit thing I've ever heard. Never, never let anybody tell you that that's a good thing. Or, or people say, you can't go broke taking profits. You can't go broke taking profits. Fuck yeah, you can. You can absolutely go broke taking profits. You want to know why? Because guess what? If I'm taking shorts here and I'm taking profits right here and I'm making $100, but my stop loss is $1,000, fuck yeah, I'm going to lose money in the long run. So yes, taking profits can make you go broke if you are not positioning yourself in the right way. You have to be able to let yourself have room. You have to be able to position yourself in a sense where letting your one winners run, taking advantage of the conviction you have with the model by scaling into a position and letting your contracts do the work for you, letting the chart do the work for you. So that was the second trade that we ended up taking today. Or actually, I'll just keep, take it off. Or that was the third trade, sorry, third trade. Which was kind of like three mini trades in one trade, but I, I consider it to be one trade. Um, just managed. So. After this, I pretty much called it there. Um, I, we went on, I, I went on the Top Step Live today. So right after this, I went on the Top Step Live. I was, was chilling with Eddie for a bit. We talked, which was good. And then I came back in the PM session. Again, not really planning to take a trade, but I was looking at the people in, people in chat, and this looked great to me. A lot of you guys know me and know how I trade from being in this community for so long. What do you think was the main thing I was looking for? At this point in time, to take a long, what do you think was the main thing I was looking for to give me validation to take a long? Yep. Both. I mean, I, I'll take both of those answers. Displacement and the inverse. Displacement and the in, imbalance getting ran through. This was the main thing I was looking for. Let me take this off a bit. Whenever I have buy side or sell side and we have in a singular move or a strong push to whatever that level is, a lot of the time, the stronger the push to the level, the, the more likely it is a manipulation move. When we get a move like this where it's boom and then this gets wicked up and we create an imbalance like this, if this gets ran through, I am confident we do not go back down here. Sell side has now been swept. Again, we are in a bigger time frame imbalance. We're in a four hour imbalance. I'm looking to see this imbalance get ran through. And what does this give me the draw? If this gets ran through, what is the draw on liquidity? This high. As, the, as low hanging fruit. Once this gets ran through, this is low hanging fruit. So I'm looking to see this imbalance get ran through and look to take a position targeting this internal high. So again, zoom into a one minute. Or five minutes, sorry. And we end up coming down. This, this, in my opinion, would be your, your first entry. I did not enter here. I did not enter here. This, to me, would be your first entry. But again, like I always say, I always normally wait for the second entry. I have higher win rate. I have more confidence with it. 
So I'm waiting to see this five minute fair value get pulled. Again, I'm still waiting for the the, the bigger time frame imbalance to get ran through as well, because technically we're still holding it, but I still have confidence we're most likely going to run it. And then this is when I'm like, oh, it's fucking go time. We get the displacement. The imbalance has been ran through on a bigger time frame. We create another imbalance on a five minute for an entry model. This is when I zoom into the smaller time frame. Again, what am I looking for in price? We have a nice one minute imbalance. I scale into a position. We come down. Right when we tap this one minute fair value gap, I entered long with a stop near these lows. Again, and I'm looking to scale into this position. I'm looking to scale into my winners. Now, again, I don't, you don't, I don't do this every trade, but if there is an opportunity for me to do so, I will do it. I'm not constantly looking, but when it's clear to me is when you'll find the best opportunity. If you're constantly looking for opportunity, a lot of the times you're going to take bad opportunity because you're constantly looking for something. When you're focused on managing a position, the best opportunity will pop out like a sore thumb. And those are the high quality setups you want. So this is my great entry model. I'm in, I'm in half my size. Again, I'm, I'm trading half my size at this point in time because I'm up all, already a lot on the day. But again, this is sell side is now swept. It, again, this is my entry model. This is exactly what I showed you guys. This is the Twitter thread. Liquidity swept. Bigger time frame drawn liquidity is higher. Rejection of a four hour imbalance. Displacement to the downside or dis displacement back up inside the range. What am I looking for? Uh, an imbalance to take a trade and targeting the internal draw. Can we come back down? Again, back to equilibrium of this previous price leg as well. I enter in contract size. I'm holding, I'm holding, I'm holding, blah, 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 blah. I enter another contract right here. One more contract, move my stop to the low. And then I added one more. Right here. And I talked and I said this in the chat too. People in the chat were like, oh my God. We're chopping, we're chopping, we're chopping, we're chopping so much. Uh, everybody was tweaking, everybody was tweaking, everybody was tweaking. And I was like, guys, patience. The, you know where the market wants to go. You know why the markets move. Why is this little, you know, choppy action stressing you out? Let the market do its thing. I basically said, okay, if we're having this much hesitation, this is what I'm expecting. 352 bounce. And I said that in chat. I said 352 and then bounce because we're going to come down, take these equal lows. We're going to rebalance into this price and then we're going to most likely bounce. So we come back down. 352. I added one more contract exactly here. The best fill I could possibly get. Moving my stop. And then we end up getting that move straight up to that high. And, uh, and bing, bang, boom. So four for four on the day. Today, I think, was one of those days where experience really showed its value. Um, and I don't, mean, I don't mean in the sense of, I'm actually, I mean in the sense of, of a lot of different ways. In the sense of being able to recognize certain conditions, what the market wants to do before expecting what most people would expect it to do. Um, being able to scale in and out of positions, right? Pyramiding into entries. S squeezing out as much profit as you can by by scaling in and pyramiding positions, right? All of these things is it just takes time. It takes time. It takes confidence. You have to have conviction with your model to be able to do it in the first place, right? So that's your first fucking focus is you focus on building conviction with your model and building confidence with your model, and then you can look to start practicing being able to pyramid a new entry and look for internal entry stuff like that. But your main focus, again, needs to be building confidence. So those are the four trades that we took today. Uh, I'm up 12K today across all my accounts. Um, so again, great day today. Super happy with the trades that we took. Super happy with the level of execution. We are doing this shit day in, day out as tactical traders. This community is fucking insane. The amount of, the, the level of growth that I've seen across our members, I can, I can confidently attest that I don't think there's really any other community out there that is doing the level uh, of trading that we, were, that we are doing. And I could confidently say that. So and if you guys en enjoyed this video and this recap, please make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace.